On January 20th, 2025, Donald J. Trump was re-elected as the 47th President of the United States at the age of 78. But long before this political comeback, the world was already fascinated by something else, his unorthodox fast food heavy diet. Whether you admire him or oppose him, one thing is certain, Donald Trump's eating habits are a unique blend of billionaire indulgence and all-American drive through culture. Here you won't see any kale smoothies, no canola salads, instead we're talking Big Macs, fried chicken and Diet Coke on demand with the press of a button. My name is Andrew Shattuck and I'm a graduated sports scientist at Harper University and today we're diving into the nutritional side of the polarizing diet. Does it hold up? Can you maintain it? What kind of strain does it place on the body? And at the end we'll see how it compares to the average American diet. In order to obtain this information, I fished through multiple different video sources, including Vices Inside Trump's Diet, Business Insider's Trump's Eating Habits, and the infographic shows Trump's Diet Exposed, and the articles such as Economic Times and Times India, plus a couple others that I've researched in order to get my stuff right. After that, we're going to be analyzing each meal's items, macronutrients, and calories using our science-based background to analyze his diet, and at the end of the video, tally all his metrics compared to an average American, and guesstimate his average life expectancy. After going through a couple of these reference sources, we're able to piece together a six-meal plan. Obviously, it's not perfect science, a lot of these different sources had different ideas, but we got the average and did our best. Now we have his diet, let's go through each meal and have a look at how our president dines and shines. Hey guys, we're here. I've got Donald Trump's diet on the screen here. I'm gonna be talking to you, looking at the screen at the same time. And together we're gonna to go through his diet, the potential side effects, what I would do differently as a nutritionist and how that can affect his health. And then we're gonna be looking at how that compares to somebody his age and see the differences and what he could do differently to improve his life expectancy. So we're gonna start here with his breakfast at 8 a.m. Donald Trump is known to be a morning person. His first meal tends to be a black coffee or Diet Coke, if anything at all. He sometimes decides to fast depending on where he's at, if he's at a rally or if he has a very active day, he just decides to skip that completely. He's normally reading newspapers, the New York Times, watching cable news, making early phone calls, or possibly playing golf in his time. The meal consists of five calories, protein, zero carbs, zero, and fat, zero. So we're just seeing a black coffee here or a Diet Coke, which honestly is not bad. If you're having a coffee in the morning, especially a black coffee, we're expecting the caffeine to be around 100, 150 milligrams, which is completely fine to start off your day. The coffee in itself inhibits the melatonin. There's loads of different antioxidants in black coffee, especially if you get high-end stuff, which he probably gets himself. And if you get to Diet Coke, uh, same, there's ca caffeine in there that can do the exact same, get you ready for the day. A lot of people probably say um, the sweeteners in the Coke would be bad for him. The aspartame is, tends to be uh, the most used in the UK and the US, which aspartame in itself isn't that bad. There's loads of clinical evidence showing how it helps people who are obese or overweight lose some fat, uh, lose some extra weight if used in low-ish amounts. We're talking 10 to 15 cans maximum a day. Donald Trump has 12, which tends to be in that range, but obviously, you know, if you have a bit too much of something, it's not gonna be best for you. But if I had to rate this breakfast, if breakfast at all, sometimes he skips it completely, is not that bad as a nutritionist. Seeing someone have a black coffee in the morning, as I do myself, isn't a bad thing. The problems come later on in the diet, as you will see together. At 11 a.m., he has his first snack, meal, two Diet Cokes, some candy. For example, he has some M&Ms here. The calories are 200, proteins two grams, the carbs are 36, and the fat is eight grams. His likely activity during this time is in-office phone calls. There's no physically activity, sorry, no physical activity reported, and tweeting, posting on True Social, or watching the news. Now here, any refined carbohydrates or high GI carbohydrates, as we say, or are digested quickly into the bloodstream. If you're not an athlete, are not the best for you because they go directly to your fat stores through a process called glycogenesis. And if you don't go into anaerobic respiration when you do exercise, that means you go past your carbohydrate threshold and into when you're burning fat, you're probably not really gonna burn that off. And if I had to take an educated guess, I do not think Trump actually does that in a day-to-day -day basis. We're talking anaerobic respiration happens when you go above two to three minutes of intense exercise. And Trump probably doesn't get off and does that much except play golf or has intense uh, Twitter battles against Elon Musk. So I'm guessing here that a lot of the carbohydrates that he has, especially the refined ones, go directly into his fat stores. 
and does not supplement his glycogen storage. If you're an athlete and you have refined carbohydrates just before an intense bout of exercise, or you're gonna go and play a game and you want to supplement your glycogen stores, yeah, 100% you can have some refined carbohydrates. That would definitely help your performance and especially inhibit a lot of side effects caused by um, lack of ATP stored in your glycogen or lack of ATP because you don't have enough sugar in your blood when you do intense activity. Trump's case, he probably has a lot of uh, glycogen stored up and he doesn't really need to supplement it with high GI carbohydrates. So I wouldn't recommend this personally for him. Also, we're seeing here he has two more Diet Cokes, which again, you probably want him to see water. You probably want to see uh, maybe some electrolytes if you're really sweating a lot, if he's in a high hot climate or he's rallying in uh, places like Florida, maybe some uh, electrolytes in there, but I don't really think that that's the best for him. Uh, also, I see here a lot of sugar already in the first meal of the day, uh, a lot of hard carbohydrates. Grenadine and leptin levels will be elevated as they're expecting a lot of food to come in. Um, you're going to spike your insulin, so you're probably going to get uh, reduced or increased insulin sensitivity depending on what you're eating and when you're eating it, which can cause the probability of diabetes. And as we'll see you later, he has a lot of salt too, so hypertension. And if you have diabetes and hypertension, the chances of a heart attack are... Woo! Then we're going to go into lunch, 1 p.m. His meal is Big Mac, filet of fish fries, and Diet Coke. Calories, 1,330. Protein, 38. Carbohydrates, 130. And fat, 60 grams. The activity during this time is private meetings, media planning, traveling between venues, and continued low activity unless... Re um, unless a rally later in the day. Just as a reference, the recommended carbohydrates, fat, and protein in each meal are around 40 to 50 grams of carbohydrates, around 30 grams of protein, and around 20 to 30 grams of fat. Donald Trump takes us to a whole different level, giving us 39 grams of carbs, which is pretty okay, 11 grams of protein, which is really low, and then 41 grams of fat which obviously again spikes your ghrelin and leptin hormones, ghrelin being the hunger hormone and leptin being the satiety hormone, which would make him feel extra hungry. That's probably why he eats so many times throughout the day. The sodium of this meal is 1.9 grams or 1,900 milligrams, which is within the recommended dose for the whole day. So the whole day is 1,500 to 2,300 milligrams for an average active human. So Trump um, already goes within that uh, threshold within the first big meal of the day. But just talking protein, 38 grams for a meal isn't bad at all. Um, obviously, a lot of these proteins would be low quality. I'm expecting it gets this from Mar uh, McDonald's, Wendy's, or other fast food chains, which have to produce these in massive quantities and go through a lot of industrialization to make sure that they get uh, the protein to their doorstep. So the quality of the protein probably isn't the best. If I had to recommend Donald Trump a meal here, um, I'll probably say some high quality venison, some high quality salmon. He has the money for it. Um, get yourself some boiled potatoes. You can put some extra virgin olive oil to flavor it. You can get some sweet potato, which is, has low calories, really good for you, a lot of different nutrients in those foods. Um, when I see here, he has 1.9 thousand milligrams of sodium. That's gonna cause hypertension and risk of your cell swelling, which isn't good at all. And I think he has had that a habit to him in the past, if I'm not wrong, which again causes him a lot of problems. If you have a hyper uh, palatable, hyper processed diet, you tend to have more problems with your um, hypertension, your blood sugars, your uh, blood volume. So here Trump's uh, really starting off strong with the sodium. Uh, I, I'd give this around a five out of 10, maybe a four out of 10 for an average person understanding his limitations. We're gonna go through the next meal now. It's 3.30 p.m. Snack, drink, uh, more Diet Coke, two to three cans, dessert, apple pie, or ice cream, calories 300, protein two, carbs 55, fat 12 grams, and likely activity being TV interviews, press statements, protein travel, sorry, potential travel, time, or motorcycle ride, no physical, motorcycle ride, motorcade ride, sorry, no physical movement, and continued desk work. Again here, there's no protein essentially. Um, calories are 300, proteins two grams, carbs 55 and fat 12 grams. There's no protein essentially. The carbohydrates are really high. Fats are okay, I guess, but your grenadine and leptin are gonna be super high. Their sensitivity is gonna be elevated if you only have carbs throughout the day. They're expecting a big meal to come. Um, the satiety levels of this meal are low because carbohydrates tend to make you feel hunger. 
um, the spike in blood sugar. I mean, just it's just overall not a really good meal to have. Donald Trump's having it. He's living life. Again, a lot of the carbs, a lot of the fats are going to go directly into lipogenesis to be stored as fat reserves, which again will give him his lustorious physique. If lustorious is a word, luxurious is the one I was looking for. So again, wouldn't recommend this at all. Give this a two out of 10. Then we're gonna go into 7 p.m. dinner. His meal is well done steak with ketchup, fries, ice cream. That just sounds like a toddler's well done steak, really? With ketchup, fries, and ice cream. I mean, well done steak, uh, it will get rid of some of the protein quality, but really it doesn't really make that much of a difference. The calories is 1,200 protein, 50 grams, carbs, 60 grams, and fat, 80 grams. Like the activity is private dinner or a home Trump property, meeting with advisors or family, or likely seated again, possibly prepping for the evening's interview or public appearances. Now this meal has a 21, 17, 62 uh, carbohydrate protein and fat profile, which is super elevated fat levels for a meal, especially if you're a non-Eskimo as uh, Trump is. Again, a lot of this is gonna go directly into lipogenesis. You're gonna get a lot of fat stores and he's not gonna burn it off because he's not gonna do anaerobic respiration if above his maintenance calories, which we'll see later it is. 10 p.m. late night snack, optional. Uh, cookies and more ice cream. Essentially, we're talking a lot more sugar. He's watching TV, he's posting online, prepping for bed or working late. Um, again, sugar, fat. Gonna go directly to his stores, he's not gonna burn it off afterwards. Um, he's not gonna be doing anaerobic exercise. It's gonna be way over his surplus at this time. We're talking, we're into the 3,000 calories now. Before bed, you don't really wanna to have too much sugar as well because spikes and drops, maybe drops will give you a better quality of sleep, but I mean, generally, you don't really wanna to eat too much before bed as it, looks, it, it tends to affect your circadian rhythm. But in this case, it's just a bad idea because uh, of the quality of food he's eating. But anyway, we're gonna go into the big thing, which is his overall daily summary. The calories are 3,400 plus or minus. Protein is 96 grams plus or minus 10. Could vary based on steak size, fast food choices, and substitutions. Uh, carbohydrates are 331 grams plus or minus 30 grams. Desserts, fries, or soda consumption could easily swing this. Fats, 182 grams plus or minus 20 grams. Well done steak, fat content, and fried foods are major variables here. Uh, dietary fiber likely very low, less than 10 grams. Fast food contains minimal fiber unless a rare salad is eaten, which we don't think he does. Vegetable, nearly none, apart from lettuce on burgers or a side of salad, often omitted. And sugars are high, 100 to 150 grams, depending on desserts and soda intake. Desserts plus ketchups and hidden sugars and processed foods can vary this. And then sodium is extremely high, above 4,000 milligrams, um, and plus or minus 500 to 1,000 milligrams due to processed meats, fries, cheese, and so uh, sauces for far exceeding the recommended 2.3 thousand as the upper threshold per day. His carbohydrates protein to fat ratio is, is 40%, 12%, and 48%, which is not recommended. Again, we're gonna go back to the carbohydrates 40 to 50%, protein being 30% of muscle atrophy and improve tendon health, improve hair health. I mean, the collagen and the essential amino acids within high quality meat will definitely help him with his health, especially if he eats good quality fish. You got a lot of omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids, which would definitely help his brain health as he seems to be losing at the moment. Now, if we can compare this to somebody who is his age, uh, recommended sedentary male, age 70 to 80, the recommended calories is somebody for him, or his maintenance calories is probably around 2,000 to 2,200. We're gonna increase that slightly because he's a big guy. So it's a maximum 2,400, 2,500. His calories is 3,435 a day. So he's over 1,000 on a surplus, which may explain the excess weight he's gaining the latest years. The protein is, 30, uh, is 96 grams, which isn't a bad uh, quantity, but if we think about uh, the overall percentage, which is 12, and how much it varies depending on what he's eating and where he's eating it, it's pretty bad. The recommended sanitary amount is 70 to 90 grams, which is 15 to 20% of the daily calorie intake. Carbohydrates are 330 for Donald Trump, 40% of his diet, and then 225 to 325 for an average sedentary male around his age, which is pretty okay. The fat is 180 grams, 48%, um, and then an average sedentary male would be 44 to 78 grams, which is 20 to 35 
of their lifestyle or their daily intake. Fiber, very low, less than 10 grams, and then sedentary male would recommend having around 30 grams a day. Sodium, upwards of 4,000 milligrams. The upper echelons of sodium that we'd recommend for somebody his age um, with his lifestyle was around 2,300 milligrams. Added sugars, high, around 100 to 150 grams, was the recommended amount, normally being 36 grams a day, HEA, upper limit. Vegetables, fruit, very low, probably nothing at all. And then at least five servings a day for somebody within his age range, uh, depending on their lifestyle and physical choices. So what does that mean for Trump? I'm sorry about the noise. I've recently just in the process of moving out of my apartment to a different one, but that doesn't make a difference. We're still gonna finish up this video. Trump's diet is ultra processed, uh, hyper palatable, has loads of fat, it's got 50, almost a 50% fat index. Um, loads of sodium are almost double or more than double the recommended amounts for a sedentary 78 year old and his lifestyle um, probably is very stressful he's got a lot of things going on in his life so I can't really recommend his own diet if I was going to do something differently as a sports scientist I'd probably recommend him to get a personal chef to cook him high quality protein uh, focused diets um, diet plans periodize it throughout his year or at least a couple months so it can go in accordance to his active schedule. So as an uneducated or educated guest, I'll probably give him to around 85 max if he gets, for example, like stem, stem cell uh, replacement therapy or different types of health benefits because he's a billionaire. But yeah, um, diet's three out of 10. Can't recommend it at all. Don't eat like Donald Trump. In fact, eat like uh, an animal, eat like a primal animal. Just kidding, eat good, eat healthy fats, eat healthy protein, eat some carbohydrates, walk 10,000 steps a day, you'll be okay. Don't do Donald Trump's diet, do not recommend. If you, I've lost 40 pounds in the last 100 days, I'm doing more of this content, I'm going through different styles. Please follow and like and subscribe if you like this ton of content and I'll see you later, have a good one.